How to create coloring books for KDP using free tools. Hi, Kerry here from Dream Creator B and welcome to my channel where we show you how to make money online with KDP low content books and Etsy with new training every week. So be sure to hit the big red subscribe button down below. So today, what am I showing you? I am showing you how to actually create coloring books for the KDP market and you can use them for Etsy printables using free tools and free images. So today I'm going to actually show you Vecteasy, which is where you can actually get your images for free. But you need to put attribution that you are using these images in your book or on your printables or anywhere that you are actually using these. You also need to check the license whenever you download them. And it does actually come in several languages. But you can also join the pro version, which is $9 a month if it is billed annually which is $108 a year, or you can do monthly image subscription, which is $14 per month. And there's some really good graphics here. Now, the reason why Vecteasy is quite good is because that most of them are vector graphics. And the best thing about vector graphics is that when you enlarge them, you are not pixelating the image. They are not becoming blurred because they've been they've been vectorized basically so you can use any of these so what you need to do is you need to actually look for the free ones so if you're looking for flowers flowers if i can spell it correctly you can then search down and actually look for the free license and there it does say a big free on them that you can download so say we were going to go for this one to remove colors we're not i'm going to show you one i chose you would click here and it says free download attribution required and you would click on that and there is where it says free license and it also gives you what you need to actually put if you click here and it says print which is the one we're looking at and again you can put it on merch you can put it in your videos you can use it as a web but if you do you need to make mention Vecteasy and if you want you can also mention who the artist is and to avoid the attribution you click join pro so what i did is i actually looked for some images to get hold of because what we want to do is we want to actually remove the colors now you're better if you can choose an image that's actually got a black outline this one hasn't but we can have a look and see if there is any that's got black outlines so we can choose animals again animals and there are quite a few that's on the free plan as well um there's some already done for you if you want to use specific colouring ones. These are here if you want to do any masking where you put types of images inside them. I have created a couple of different videos showing you how to mask both in PowerPoint and in Photopy. And if you want to check them out, they're on the right hand side. So here's a few images and what you're looking for basically is these with black lines, but you can also do it without black lines. Now, if you haven't got Illustrator or Affinity, there are free programs that you can use to actually be doing these. And yes, you can do it in PowerPoint, but it's a workaround and I will actually create a video showing you how to do it with SVGs. I've already done a video showing you how to remove color from PowerPoint just in one general image. And I'll show you, I'll take that a step further by showing you what else you can do with that. So check out for that video and also check out for removing color from a image in PowerPoint. And that again will be in the top right hand corner. So. These are different images that you can go for, but like I said, I've actually chosen this one. But So when you download the image, what happens is it gives you different files. Now, this has given you EPS and JPEG. Now, neither one of those is what we can actually use. We want an SVG file. Now, all of these come with EPS or JPEG or AI, AI file, which is in Illustrator, and you can remove colors in Illustrator as well. But that is a paid program with Adobe and it's a subscription model and the cheapest is probably about £30 a month for the full suite. So people want either free or cheap and if you want cheap but professional standard software then the one I'm going to show you is free. You can upgrade with it or you can look into Affinity which is even cheaper but not a free 
version. And again, I will do different videos showing you different software that is available and that you can actually use. So here they're all this, but to get around that, you use a website and this website is called Convertio. Co. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description for you. So what you need to do is you need to upload the image that you're going to use. And we've already chose the image, which is this one here. So I've uploaded it and it's EPS. And then you click on here and you can choose image and SVG because that's what we want. Now, SVG shows us all the different layers in the image. So I've already done that. As you can see, I've downloaded it here and here you can actually see download and it's asking me to rate it as well. And I've done a numerous amount of um, different images. In fact, it says five that I've done and tested and it's not asking me for any payment or anything like that. So it is free to use. So this is the free program that we're going to be using. It's called Gravit Designer and you can actually get the pro version and pay for it. But I've logged in uh, today and got Gravit Designer 15 day trial. You don't put any credit card in or anything like that. And it gives you the full pro version. But what we're using today, all the tools we're using today are in the free version. The free version is online, similar to Photop, so you don't download it to your desktop. There is an excellent free illustrator, well, free program that's as powerful as Illustrator for doing vectors and saving as SVGs and creating dot to dots, which is called Inkscape. Um, and I will show you that in another time, although it's very difficult to upload and store on a Mac, it is still possible. So what we need to do is we're going to start a coloring book probably a children's book. So we want to be setting the page size. So we need to change this from pixel to inches because as we know, KDP works in inches. So I'm um, click eight and a half by 11. I'm not doing any bleed. So then what you need to then do is go file and open your local file. And what we're doing, we don't want that one. We actually want that one that's the SVG. So I'm going to open it up and I'm not going to use all the images. I'm just going to show you a couple of images and how we correct now. Now, if you look here, the page size is not right. So we need to change that to inches. Plus, we need to change the DPI from 72 to 300 because we are doing it for print. DPI at 72 is perfect for web, but because we're doing it for print, we need to change that as well to 300. And I've changed it to CM YK. Not that it makes any difference, but that's really what you should be doing for print. But uh, prints these days don't really make such a great difference. So we need to change this here. So I double click it and do eight and a half. I don't know why it resets. Okay. And I could have just used US letter size. Now I need to resize all my image here. Up. And I also want my page to actually have a white background so I can see what I'm doing. So I click in there rather than on the little pen and then click white and that should give me a white background. I've also toggled on page, multiple pages and I can toggle it on and off. And here I'm going to add another page. I'm going to go back to that. And I'm going to click on my layer, which is here, and I'm actually going to ungroup this whole layer so I can actually grab hold of the different ones that I want to work with. So I'm going to choose this chicken here. And what I can do is I can just circle around it and I'm going to pick up a few other things, which I can simply get rid of when I'm happy with it. So I'm going to... You know, go around the cockerel that I want and I'm going to do command C or control C to actually copy then I'm going to go to page two and if I and then I just go here and I can resize it now what I meant by toggle if I toggle this on and off you'll see that I can see all my different pages 
so I can go back and see what the actual hen look like. So if I toggle it off, I can just be concentrating. Now I need to get rid of all these extra bits. So I just highlight them. I might actually keep that little chicken there. Get rid of that as well. So all I'm doing is holding shift down and clicking to get rid of all these extra bits. No, not got everything. So I click there. And that's it. So I've got rid of everything that I want to get rid of. So now I'm going to highlight there. And because I've selected everything, I can actually go in and click on the number here, number, I mean color, and then I can change it to white. Now I can't see anything, but again, if I just draw around it, the red lines come. And I can click here, and it should. Yep, it's doing this to me. I'm just going to. There we go. Sometimes you have to just maneuver it so it does that, and it's only showing it faint because the point system is very low. So I'm going to change that to four. Press enter and it's quite thick. I might actually make that take that down a bit. Two. I think I'll do it at two. Even though it's a children's book and it should be a bit thicker. So I'm gonna actually zoom in so we can see what I'm doing. So we've got this hen here, and it actually looks all right, but the feet are a bit strange. And this one's got some strange things going on as well. So we need to do some adjustments. So here we're going to go into that eye and we're going to change the eye and put black inside the eye. So it just makes it stand out a bit. We might not do that with the beak, but the legs are a bit weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on each one of the images, image, I mean parts of the leg, and I'm going to select all of these parts and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here which is called create compound shape and I'm going to click on the drop down and I'm going to click union and that should get rid of most and then click there click 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 and then again union and it's done that one fine so we're all right with those here, if we look at the beak a bit, I'm just going to use the hand tool to move. It's got this funny edge here. So I'm going to, there's two things I can either do. So just take the hand off. I'm going to select that. And here where it says borders, if you click on advance, you can change what it looks like there. So I can click round and see if the joints round up. And the joints have rounded up there. And then we've got a funny one here. So I can do the exact same. Go to the borders one, do round and do round. And that should have joined that one up as well. So I'm just going to hand tool again, click on it so I can move around. Well, I've still got it quite big to see if there's any others that need improving. And from where I can see, no. So we've done with that chicken it was quite simple to do but we need to fix this one because this one's a bit weird so I'm going to take the hand tool off just by clicking on there and it takes it off and I can select here and see what we can do so this eye let's see if I can fill it so we filled that eye so it looks a lot better I might just delete that um, and I might just fill that so that looks a little bit better there and I might see if I can delete that bit there. No, I want to keep that bit so I'm going to take off that bit and I'm actually going to go back there and I'm going to take that border down to zero just to thin it out and I'm going to do the same with that one just to thin that out as well. And then I'm going to union the 
little legs. As well, so I'm going to click ear and in. And that, but they're in the wrong order. They're above, and we don't want above. So we need to send the order back. So these here is bring the element forward or the element back. So if I bring the element forward, I have to keep doing it. In fact, I'm not happy with that because I've got the wrong element. So what I want is the legs. So I'm going to send them backwards. Keep them backwards. There we go. So that has brought our legs backwards, which is great. So it's just in a funny position now. So let's move it and put it somewhere over here. There we go. And that is our little chicken image. And we can do another one. So we could create another page here. We could go back here and select something else. So we could have the frog again. Go back, watch over it. So all I did was copy and paste using my shortcut keys, which was Command C and Command V for pasting. So click there and just delete that one. So again, highlight round it. Change it to white. Oh, flip the image again. Change the border color. And I just find changing it suddenly brings up what we want. So I want black, and I want to change the border to about two. Again, press enter. And it should give me that. Now we've got some funny shapes here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can union them. No. So I might just take the border down with that. Let's just take it off. I'm going to change that to that and even then I'm going to see if I can do it. No, you can't get in to delete it. So I might just change all of those. Not all of them. I might take that one off because it is a bit big. In fact, I could probably take all of those off because it's a children's coloring book anyway. So all I've done is hold the shift key down to select. I'll leave that, those two there so they don't seem as weird. And I'm going to colour his eyes in so that they don't look so bad. Colour fill. And this seems a bit weird. So I'm going to join the two. I'm going to join that with that. And again, then it looks a bit weird, so I'm just going to undo it. But you can actually stretch them out if you think it needs to look a bit, a bit more joint than it is. That's it. It just seems to... So I'm quite happy with both of those. So I'm going to fill that in as well because it's a fly. Okay, we've finished with all of this and we are going to export. So right click on page two and export. I'm going to say no because I don't want to save it, but you can. I am going to select both of them. I'm going to change that to JPEG. I'm also going to change my size to 300 dpi making sure that it has kept everything again i'm going to make sure i select two i'm going to select the export all use the page color as well i'm going to take the thing up all the way 
and you can see things keep deselecting so you need to make sure so jpeg 300 dpi 100 percent user page and i'm going to export everything and it's giving it me in a zip folder which i want so i'm going to name this and it is book test and i'm actually going to stick it on the desktop so that i know which one it is okay, on desktop so that is done so what i'm going to do now i'm going to go to canva you can sign up for canva for free the link will be down in the description and to do this now you click create a design and choose custom size then you choose eight and a half by eleven making sure that that is in inches so i'm going to create a new design so we've got this nice blank page but what i need to do is i need to actually upload what i've got so i'm going to go into desktop and i'm going to unzip that and inside there I should have page two and three and I'm just going to upload. And as you can see, I've already got some there. So I'm going to, when it's done, I'm just going to drag this out. And because I've done 300 DPI, it has actually kept the size that I wanted. And then to get a new page, I just click here, add a new page. And I can drag out my Mr. Frog. And then what I can do is I can put a bit of text in. So text. Um, choose some text. And the beauty of this is it gives you nice ones you can choose. Or I'm just going to type that out. And I'm going to do mother hen. Something like that. And I can change it so it's hollow. So it can be coloured in as well. So you go effects and then hollow and it will change it that as well. So again, and then I can change that to Mr. Frog and again, effects and hollow. And that's something else I can be doing as well. And I can move it down if I want, but keeping it in the middle of that and this as well you move it slightly down but keeping it in the middle and that is our book but you can also add and move things up by clicking there and it'll move it up and we can click we can do some more different styles so let's do i don't know i think i must do get rid of some of that so Yard coloring book, and the reason why it's saying it's spelling error because I'm in the UK, so it's trying to give me UK spelling, but it might also be because Canvas Australia. So we can do this as well. Hooray! And then because I've used free images, I need to make sure that I put attribution in. So I'm just going to get some more text here. Add a little bit of body and at tree fusion. If I can spell it right, attribution. No, too many bits in there. Attribution. And if I go back to the TVZ, it's not actually telling me vectors. Okay. Go back. Because it's a book, we can't actually put all the A ref and everything. So we'll do that. Tree Ocean. And then I'd also put my own copyright in as well. So I'm going to duplicate that. So I duplicate it by going up there. And then I would put okay. right. details. So now we've finished with our colouring book. We're only doing little bits just to show you how the tools work. 
what you need to then do is download and not PNG because you want it for KDP make sure it's PDF print and then click that and make sure that you save it with the amount of pages now Canva gives you a limited amount of pages it goes up to 30 or it did um, in the free version so all you do is you go up to 30 print off that PDF and then you would use free free tools like PDF Combiner to actually combine the PDFs. So I hope you found this helpful. I'll leave all the links down in the description for you. But before you go, there's also one more uh, pay place to find images. It is not free, but you can get everything on this site for $20 and they update it frequently. It's called Daily Art Hub and you might have seen some adverts on Facebook for it. It is fantastic. They do a lot of SVG images. They also do PNGs and JPEGs and also images that are already there as illustration images. Again, the link will be down in the description and here and some of the images I actually use for one of my Halloween books. And I combined that with the images from here, images from Great uh, Creator Fabrica and images that I purchased from some of the PLR creators. And I will do another video showing you where to go and get all your images from so that you're safe with most licensing if you check. But yes, Daily Art Hub is brilliant for pod it's got pod is print on demand and you can be using that to check it out and it's only twenty dollars for the whole entire site so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and hit the little b above my head to subscribe and don't forget to check out my videos on how to create coloring books fast with using dingbats and also check out removing color using powerpoint